So I wanted to talk a little bit about what's in the cloud marketplace. The first thing that you can expect to find inside of the cloud marketplace is professionally built images that you can replicate into your own Google Compute instances. Some of these setups are free and some of them cost money and have licensing fees. It all depends on what you're doing. Some of the more popular open source projects have even been curated into their own images by Google themselves. So they're set up very securely and using all of the best practices right out of the box and they have no licensing fees. Google has really respected the open source community in this way. Some of the ones that have licensing fees are very large instances that really do very powerful things. For instance, NVIDIA provides one that runs the Quattro engine, which is used for scientific studies and AI training. And these machines do not benefit from only having one or two processors. The GPU that's attached to these guys is much too powerful to be even driven by such a small machine. So a lot of items that are on the higher end have minimum setups, like four or eight CPUs. This will be noticeable as you're setting it up as you can't customize it down beyond a certain point. Once you decide on something you wanna set up, the deployment manager makes it really easy to manage and clean up these things. For instance, if you set up a WordPress system, it's going to provision an instance and some security groups and some firewall stuff and at the end of the life cycle of that server, you may want to take it down. You don't want to have to go clean up all of those smaller details, or you may not even remember where they are. So the deployment manager bundles this all up and takes care of it. And we'll be taking a look at it in the lab. So for some of those really cool and much more expensive VM instances, if you're not going to be using them much, you can always turn them on for a very short period of time. For me, sometimes I'll set up a video rendering engine if I have a very long video to render, and I'll go ahead and flip it on, transfer the files I need onto it, usually from one of Google's storage things where I've uploaded overnight, and then I just render my video and turn it off an hour later. This allows me to save lots and lots of time in my personal workflows and allows me access to cutting edge technology without having to really invest into it or pay for much more than an hour at a buck or so. So if there's something in there that you'd like to try and it's very expensive, remember you can always just turn it on and turn it off for one or two hours. Google has a very nice pricing model where they price by the minute. So you won't have to worry about paying one hour minimums or trying to fit things into a very specific block of time like you will with some of the other cloud platforms. Okay, so here you've caught me cleaning up one of the test instances that we set up in one of our previous videos. But while that's being cleaned up, what I wanted to go over with you is how to set up something from the marketplace and how to navigate through it, search for it, and how to estimate your costs so that you don't get any surprise bills at the end of the month. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Google Cloud Marketplace. The easiest way I've found to get to it is just click on the marketplace down here in the bottom left hand corner of the navigation. And that's going to take you into this area. And here you can just search for things. For instance, if we wanted to set up a, a Joomla instance, we could just search for Joomla and we would find it. In this case, I'm going to take you through setting up your own WordPress site. So we're gonna go ahead and do a search for WordPress. Now one of the things I'd like you to see immediately is that there are several options and you'll need to pick the one that's best for you. There's a lot of companies that publish various things to the marketplace. And in this case, several companies have published WordPress platforms. Some of these are optimized towards multiple users Others have licensing structures because they've been secured and hardened. Others are just the open source software as it is traditionally deployed and managed by Google. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of these here real quick and see what some of the differences are. So first, let's go find the one that we're actually going to use. The one I wanna use is the one that's by Google and is just for a single site. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this guy and we'll look at its Google Marketplace uh, profile page, if you will. 
Now there's a few things I'd like you to notice on this. For instance, right at the top, they have an estimated cost for the usage of this. Now, if you have a very high traffic site and you need to increase some of the settings, this will obviously not be the cost. However, the cost is broken down for you over here on the right. Now, when you launch these, you can set up a lot of different settings that can change this. However, notice that it is going to suggest one vCPU and 3.7 gigabytes of memory for it and a 10 gigabyte persistent disk. Now, let's say your website is surfing up a 12 gigabyte file. Clearly, that's not going to work and clearly these aren't going to be your cost. But one of the other things I'd like to show you is that all of these cost estimates assume that you will be leaving the server on for a while. And if you're not using one of these machines as a server, say for instance in the video scenario where, that I talked about earlier where you just spin up a VM to help render a video that's going to take a very long time on the equipment that you have at home, these costs will not be the same because you won't be getting the sustained use discount. And it's pretty significant. In this case, this would cost about $35, but with the sustained use discount, you'll see that it drops below $25. So make sure you're considering this as you go through everything. In the next video, this will be the system that we're setting up in our lab. So let me take you around and show you a couple of other little things that are just important to understand in the Google Marketplace. So here I'm gonna go ahead and show you the NVIDIA Quattro virtual workstation that I set up one time to play around and test with. And notice that its cost is quite expensive per month, $821. And that's for the minimum size that you can select. And notice that the fee breakdown includes some different things here. A much larger disk and a much larger VM, but those are essentially the same cost that we were looking at before, just much higher. Other things include the Windows licensing fee, so that's quite expensive per month, as well as the data center usage fees. So really we've got to make sure that we account for all of these costs, and if you are not going to keep it up long enough to get the sustained use discount, like for me, you need to make sure that you don't use this number and that you add these numbers together to get an accurate estimation of what your costs are really going to be like.